And here is our unit circle. So let's go ahead and fill it out. First we're going to do the degrees and radians on this page. And then on the next page we're going to do the distances which are equivalent to our trigonometric ratios. For our degrees and radians, we need to remember that a whole circle is 360 degrees and it is also 2 pi because this is the unit circle and our radius is 1, 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the circle, turns into 2 pi. And since this unit circle is in standard position, it is centered at the origin and that's where our x-axis and our y-axis cross each other. We have four important points. First of all, if we go just to the right one radius, that is 1 and up 0. If we go only up, that would be 0 to the right and 1 up. And now we're going to the left, so that is negative 1, up 0, and going down would be 0, negative 1. Those will be the only integer coordinates of our unit circle. And in terms of degrees, when we start here at the right, of course, we start at 0 degrees. And now remember, one entire turn is 360 degrees. So if we go around once, we are back where we started, and that is 360 degrees. Now, 360 divided in half will give us 180 degrees, and that is half away across the unit circle. And if we divide it by 4, we get 90. So going up one quarter of the circle is 90 degrees. Another quarter is 180, which we already went to. And another 90 degrees makes it 270 degrees. And yet another 90 degrees lets us get back to where we started from. Now we're going to take each quadrant and split that in half. All the way across the quadrant is 90 degrees and half of that is 45 degrees. And then we go from the second quadrant 90 to 180. The middle of that is plus another 45 degrees makes it 135 degrees. Then between 180 and 270 45 degrees further is 225 degrees and from 270 to 360 adding 45 degrees we get 315 degrees. Now we're going to take our 360 and divide it by 12 to get the smallest angle that we need. 360 degrees divided by 12 is 30 degrees so our smallest angle is 30 degrees right here and now we're going to keep going in 30 degree steps. 30 plus 30 is 60 degrees. 60 plus 30 is 90 but we already have that. Plus another 30 degrees is 120 degrees. 120 plus 30 is 150 degrees. 150 plus another 30 is 180. 180 plus 30 is 210 degrees. 210 plus 30 is 240. 240 degrees plus 30 is 270. 270 plus 30 is 300. And 300 plus 30 is 330. And adding 30 degrees one last time, we get 360 and we are back where we started. These are all the measurements in degrees that you need and I wrote them in different colors to help you to memorize them in groups. Always remember that you take your 360 degrees, divide it by 12, that's the smallest unit, and you can keep going in those steps of 30 to fill out most of the angles and the remaining ones that you can't get this way you get by dividing 360 by 8 to get 45 degrees and go in 45 degrees steps for the remaining angles. And now let's do the same thing in radians. And remember, radians measure the section of the circumference of the circle. 
That's why it's in pi. Where we start, we of course have zero radians. And if we go around the entire circle, we got two pi radians. Half a circle then is half of two pi, and that is just one pi. If we divide it by half more, we get one half pi which is a quarter of a circle and adding one half pi to pi we get three pi over two that's three quarters of the circle and obviously four pi over two is back to two pi now let's divide each quadrant in half as we did before we go from zero to one half pi dividing that by two we get pi over four Adding pi over 4 to pi over 2, we get 3 pi over 4. Adding another fourth, we get 1 whole pi. Adding another pi over 4, we get 5 pi over 4. Adding another 5 pi over 4, we get 6 pi over 4, which is simplifies 3 pi over 2. Adding another pi over 4, we get 7 pi over 4. And adding a last pi over 4, we get 8 pi over 4, or simply 2 pi. Now we're going to divide 2 pi by 12, just like we did for the 360 degrees. 2 pi over 12 is pi over 6. That's going to be our smallest measurement. 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6. Now we're adding another pi over 6. We get 2 pi over 6, or just pi over 3. Adding another pi over 6, we get 3 pi over 6, or just pi over 2. Adding another pi over 3, we get 4 pi over 6, which is the same as 2 pi over 3. Adding another, we get 5 pi over 6. And another, we get 6 pi over 6, which is pi. Another would give us 7 pi over 6. And the next one would be 8 pi over 6, or just simplify to 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6 is the same as 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6 is simplified to 5 pi over 3. Next we get 11 pi over 6. And last but not least, 12 pi over 6, which we already have because it is 2 pi. These are all the measurements you need to know in degrees and radians. And let me give you a few observations to help you, particularly for the measurements in radians. First of all, as you can see, we only use four different denominators, and that's why I use different colors too. We have thirds, fourths, and sixes for the most part, and we also have halves and whole ones, which I have combined here. So then let's look at the different quadrants. In our first quadrant, the numerator for all these fractions is always 1. In our second quadrant, the numerator is 1 less than the denominator in each of these cases, and that means it is 1 away from making a whole pi. In our third quadrant, the numerator is 1 more than the denominator for all three fractions, and in our fourth quadrant, the numerator is 1 away of making 2 pi, which is the value we have at the end point. Okay, and now let's go ahead and fill out all the different distances. These are the distances associated with our special right triangles. And before we get started, let's just mark some of our key points here to get a bearing. Here on the right, we have the coordinates 1 and 0 and that is zero degrees and radians. Up here we got zero and one, and that is where the measurement is pi half. To the left we got negative one zero, and that is where we're at pi, and then we got zero, negative one, and that is three pi over two. And to help us out, Let's remember that the coordinates of each point are the x-coordinate is the cosine of the angle, the 
the y coordinate is the sine of the angle. And last but not least, let's remember our signs for each quadrant. In the first quadrant, the x and the y coordinates are both positive. In the second quadrant, the x coordinates are negative, the y coordinates are still positive. In the third quadrant, both coordinates are negative, and in our fourth quadrant, the x coordinates are positive again but the y coordinates are still negative. And now let's take a look at our special right triangles. Our 30, 60, 90 right triangle is right here, where the angle is 30 degrees, and in radians that means pi over 6. We know the hypotenuse is equal to 1, that's the radius of our unit circle. The short leg is half the length of the hypotenuse and the long leg is the square root of 3 over 2. And now we can fill in our cosine and sine. The cosine is the x-coordinate of our triangle and that is square root of 3 over 2. And the sine is the y-coordinate and that is 1 half. And now let's look at our other special right triangle, the 45, 45, 90 right triangle, which means that our angle down here, the whole thing is 45 degrees. And in radians, that's equivalent to pi over 4. And in this special right triangle, we know that the legs have a length of square root of 2 over 2. Both legs are the same length. And that means that our x-coordinate, which is equivalent to our cosine, is the square root of 2 over 2. And our y-coordinate, which is the sine, is also the square root of 2 over 2. And now I'm going to put another triangle in there. And that's also really a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. But I'm going to put it flipped. So I have my angle of 60 degrees down here at the origin and that is equivalent to pi over 3 and of course this is the same triangle and therefore we know that the short leg has a length of 1 half and the long leg has a length of square root of 3 over 2 that means that our x coordinate is 1 half and our y coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. Now our first quadrant is complete and we have to keep doing this and find the sines and cosines of all of the 17 angles in our unit circle this way. And what we're going to do next is duplicate these values in all other quadrants. One way to do it is by just reflecting our triangles. So if I take my blue 30, 60, 90 right triangle and I reflect it over the y-axis, then I get a 30, 60, 90 triangle right here. And this lands us at 5 pi over 6, so just 1 6 pi short of pi. And this 30, 60, 90 triangle has, of course, the same side length, the short leg, is one half. The long leg is square roots of 3 over 2. But since we are now going to the left on the x-axis, this value is negative. That gives us our two coordinates. The x-coordinates is negative square root of 3 over 2. And the y-coordinate is one half. We can take this same triangle and now reflect it over the x-axis. We get another 30, 60, 90 right triangle. That gets us to the point 7 pi over 6. And that triangle has the same side lengths. Our short leg is 1 half. But since we're going down now, the y coordinate is negative, And the x coordinate is also negative as it shares this x coordinate with the triangle that it got reflected from. So our x coordinate at this point is negative square root of 3 over 2, and the y coordinate is negative 1 half. And last but not least, we're going to take that same exact triangle we just created 
and reflect it back over the y-axis and this gets us to the point 11 pi over 6 since we're going down now our short leg is negative one half and that gives us the coordinates our x coordinate is square root of 3 over 2 and our y coordinate is negative one half and we're done with the four blue right triangles next we're going to take our 45 45 90 or isosceles triangle and also reflect it over the y-axis and that'll give us this triangle which lands at the point 3 pi over 4 the x-coordinate of this one is negative as well so we got negative square root of 2 over 2 and a y-coordinate is positive square root 2 over 2 these are our coordinates of the point negative square root of 2 over 2 and positive square root of 2 over 2 now let's take that same triangle and reflect it downwards and now we're getting to the point 5 pi over 4 and now both our coordinates need to be negative the x coordinate is negative square root of 2 over 2 and the y coordinate is negative square root of 2 over 2 reflected back over the y axis gives us this triangle now we get to 7 pi over 4 our y coordinate is still negative but the x coordinate is positive again so we got square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2 and we're done with our 45 45 90 triangles and now let's look at our green stand up 30 60 90 triangle reflecting that over the y axis in our first step takes us to the point 2 pi over 3 our short leg is one half but we're going to the left so that's negative one half and our long leg is still positive square root of 3 over 2 that means our x coordinate is negative one half our y coordinate is square root of 3 over 2 that's positive now let's take that triangle and reflect it over the x-axis that takes us to the point 4 pi over 3 and our y coordinate is now also negative negative square root of 3 over 2 that means the coordinates of our point are negative 1 half and negative square root 3 over 2 and in our last step we're going to reflect it again over the y-axis to get this right triangle and that lands us at the point 5 pi over 3 our x-coordinate the short leg is now a positive number again but the y-coordinate is still negative negative square root of 3 over 2 so that makes our coordinates be 1 half and negative square root of 3 over 2 Phew, that was a lot of work. So this looks pretty colorful and full now, but look at it. Spend a second thinking about what numbers do you really have for coordinates. And there's only really a few numbers that you need. You have 1 and 0, you have 1 half, and then you have square root of 3 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. Those are the only numbers that keep reappearing. And the only difference you have depends on which quadrant your angle lies in. If it's quadrant 1, then both coordinates are going to be positive. If it's quadrant 2, then the x coordinate is going to be negative, the y coordinate is going to be positive. If it's quadrant 3, both of them are going to be negative. And in quadrant 4, the x coordinate is going to be positive and the y coordinate is going to be negative. You have known this since you started working with the coordinate plane. So keep that in mind and always remember that the coordinates of point P 
are the cosine of theta and the sine of theta and that's why we did all this in the first place. Alright you guys, so much for this and I will see you in class.